Fancy wanted a Harugamo game. I'll take... Okay, I'm going to play Harugamo, and they're going to go away from Destroyer for a bit. Um, I will try Harugamo in Ranked. Mostly because I'm already at the bottom, and I have nowhere to go but down, so I sort of don't care. But Harugamo is not my not a good boat for me. This this ship and I and I, this this branch of the Japanese destroyer line and I typically don't get along all that well. Um, so keep that in mind and temper your expectations accordingly. Now, should I play range Harugamo or reload? Fifteen kilometers feels like plenty of range. I'm not in I'm not in King of the Sea, so I feel like I feel like fifteen kilometers is fine. Um. That seems okay. Yeah, we'll just play her. We'll just play her like she is. I'm not sure who that is, Hobbs. You'll have to you'll have to give me a give me a little more information or a link or something. Okay. Harugamo, let's try it out. In ranked, no less. <laughs> I lost. I love it. I need that on a I need that on like a lanyard or like a badge I can wear, right? Every, in every tent camp in the world, Marxism works perfectly. Hmm, Hetman, that's a tough call. So I will say I am unfortunately not as well read as I would prefer on a lot of classic sci-fi. I have read some Heinlein. Uh, I have read Starship Troopers. My father... Um, recommended Heinlein to me when I was a teenager and I know I read Starship Troopers I feel like I tried to read is it Stranger in a Strange Land isn't that Heinlein as well I feel like I tried to read that one and didn't get and didn't finish it that sounds correct yeah okay alright so yeah um Cosmic that is one my I think that my father told me that was his favorite Heinlein and I have not read that one interesting now that we're talking about Heinlein, um, for Christmas, I bought my dad a collection of Heinlein short stories that he had curated himself. In other words, they were in, I think they were more or less in the order he wrote them, like in chronological order of their publishing back to like, what, 1937 or whatever it was, um, with little forewords or postscripts so written by him. And I need to... Um, I need to, I feel like when he's done with that book, I need to borrow it <laughs> because I do remember reading some of Heinlein's short stories in like high school and thinking, oh, this is really good. Um, but I haven't read much of him. Now, I haven't read a lot of Asimov either. I know Foundation, I grew up seeing Foundation on my father's shelf um, and he always told me I should read it and I had never have. Um, I Now that I have Apple TV, I'm genuinely curious about their television show but I've also been told if you've read the books and enjoy the books, you probably aren't going to enjoy the show. So I don't, I don't know about that one. JR, I would absolutely recommend Henri. She's a fun boat. Okay, Hobbs. Hobbs, is, are we talking about an author or like a YouTube channel? What do you got? I agree with you there, Hetman. I agree with you there. And I agree with you also, also, also Cosmic. You can't, there are things you can do in, in the written form that you cannot do on television and vice versa, right? There are things that translate better on television that don't really work in a novel necessarily. Um, going back to Hetman's question, what's my favorite sci-fi written in the last 10 years? Um, I, I, I don't know, I don't, Ginger necessarily, I don't know what she's read and hasn't read. For me, I'd probably give you Pierce Brown's Red Rising. I've read those books, I think, about three times or so. Um, your favorite sci-fi written in the last 10 years? Written in the last 10 years. I don't know. Have you? I didn't think you had. Mortis, I think, I think now that you mentioned it, I had forgotten those. And straight up, I'll tell you, that would be a really tough challenge for me to pick between that and Pierce Brown. I love David Weber. Um, I have a tremendous... Like, I love I love the Honor Harrington books. I love the Safehold books. Um, 
But I think, man, they're so different. Those two, those two books are so, those two novel series are so radically different. For starters, Weber is very, very wordy, right? Like, in a good way, but very, very wordy. Um, Brown, um, the, the world that Brown creates for Red Rising is incredible. He does, he is, he is another one of those world builders, much the same way we were talking about with, you know, uh, uh um, uh, Heinlein and Asimov and those guys, like, uh, like just so good at it. Okay. All right, if I've done this correctly, Monty will absolutely eat at least two of these. No, only one. He's going to take one on the on the port aft quarter here. I love everything that just happened. The Red Rising series has a lot of really interesting twists in it. Um, and that's one of the things that I love about it, right? Like, the twists in that series are so... Okay, I have no idea what just happened there. Are just wild, right? Just some of the stuff that happens, you're like, wait, what happened? It's so cool. They're so much fun. With that said, I have to say that the Safe Hold books are incredibly good. And I think one of the reasons that I that I would probably, now that you mention them, I'd probably pick them over the Red Rising series is because of the way Weber handles religion. He does an amazing job of folding religion into a sci-fi story in a meaning and a meaningful and interesting way without being disrespectful about it. All right, so the Shim is over on the two line somewhere. Y'all really, are y'all really need to kill that Napoli kids? Like that dude needs to die. What's up? Nothing. Okay. Most of most of what I've read is just mystery and urban fantasy. Yeah, I know. But we were talking about a lot of classic sci-fi, so there was there was a question. They were curious. Yeah. I mean, I've read uh, I read C.S. Lewis out of the Silent Planet and Paralandria back in you know high school. That's a long time ago. That was a long time. That was a ago. long time ago, sweetheart. Um, but like I I end up reading more fantasy stuff than I do uh, sci-fi. Like I go back and reread. The Dark is Rising sequence by Susan Cooper every year, every couple of years, and which I is mean, truthfully more fantasy. And yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, it's like most of, most of what I read is generally fantasy. Um, Sci-fi. I still I read I read the Honor Harrington series. I really enjoyed them up to a point. I haven't finished. We've never we've never actually we've never finished, finished the Harrington books because there's just too many now. Yeah. <laughs> it's gotten silly. But, but David Weber is like the sci-fi equivalent of Tom Clancy. So yeah. So it's kind of... It's hard to go wrong. It's hard to go wrong for me. Um, on Basilisk Station, starts out very slowly and then kind of accelerates downhill from there. Hey, Xanda. Um, but yeah, so there's... My thing is, is that... Most of the good sci-fi these days is, I don't know, I, Time I've always been more of a mystery girl goggles. anyway, so I'm kind of drawn to that, um, the noir type stuff more often than not. Fire Kathleen Kennedy. Yes, please. Now, somebody on YouTube mentioned The Expanse. I've not read those novels. I have watched the series, but I have not actually read the novels. I own the novels. I have not read them. Yeah, yeah Ketman was asking if I had Starlight power over Star Wars, what would I do first? 
You had, if you had what? If I had czar like power over Star Wars, what would I do first? Fire Kathleen Kennedy. Fire Kathleen Kennedy. You, you've you've got to get her out. If you want to save that franchise, you have to get rid of her. 100%. And then I would do an Heir to the Empire series. Because they can have Leia Organa solo, but they cry her out of my cold dead hands. Well, I'm still, I'm still frequently enraged that, that, you know, we were, are, are, you know, the, the the state of modern Star Wars is Han Solo, the deadbeat dad. Like that just that just legit enrages me. Okay, so the Napoli turned north. Those torpedoes are gonna hit nothing. Feels bad. Yes, she was. Which is one of the reasons why the books after Honor Among em Enemies can be a little seem a little forced every now and again. Yeah, he he's talked about how Otter was supposed to die at some point, and then obviously he chickened out. To Jurassic. And I think the, the, the books are a little worse for it. Yeah. All right, I think they're going to kill this Kerr first. The Montana is so far out of position, it's silly. Our Zed is literally ignoring the buff immediately adjacent to him. So, fine, I'll go get it, since apparently he won't. And yes, Gerax, I saw that, and, well... I mean, they paid him an awful lot of money. For which? What? Lucas defending Disney. Oh, Disney yeah. Making. I still think Filoni, it, and Lucas will tell you that Filoni has a better bead on things on what he intended. But, you know, Filoni is still going to do his own thing. No, Napoli, what are you doing? Stop! God, I have to go behind you. You're going to cut me in half otherwise. Well, you kind of got that with some of this stuff in The Expanse, at least in the series, Etman. Um, oh, for God's sake. They got such good gas mileage. And that other one where you were watching that it was, they were trading consciousness and stuff like that, whatever that one was, I don't remember. You're talking about Altered Carbon. Altered Carbon, yes. Again, very those are not based on, I think they might be based on comics or something, I don't remember. Yeah. Um, but they're very, they're very kind of uh, 1930s, 40s film noir. The first of. season was absolutely yeah. like no, uh, like no film noir. I love the first season of Altered Carbon. I can watch that at any time for almost any reason. It's that good. Um, well, in the first, the first season or two of The Expanse kind of has that element in there too, trying to find out what happened to Julie and, and right. all of that. But. Is the Zed in smoke? Yeah, so I have to keep spotting. I think I've got this clown. He sees him now. He's trying to turn. And he found a hole, because of course he did. Okay, good. Time to go. Now we have to go murder the Shimakaze. <laughs> Should pay attention. He's trying to trash talk you? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Whatever. He's allowed to do whatever he wants. I'm just going to laugh at him. You have shot. I've been standing here watching you. Is there... <laughs> this guy's complaining that I can't... That I can't run down the ship that's faster than me.
Hello, Tactical. <laughs> nice to meet you. Okay, that's fine. Sure. Okay, sure thing, buddy. Yep. And this, ladies and gents, is one of the reasons I don't PvP, because people are jerks. Anyway, good night. Have fun. You're already dead, my friend. Hey, look, you died. Much better. Sure. Looks like you're coming apart at the seams. Truth be told, Xander, he probably outscored me, right? But you have to remember how I... Okay, so this is this is one of the reasons that Harugamo and I don't get along, okay? The ship handles like garbage. It's spotted from orbit for a destroyer. It has a tremendous amount of gunpower, but it doesn't ever want to be firing in open water. It wants to be camped in smoke. What does that mean? It means you can only put it in very specific locations to sit and farm people. When there's islands around, they're going to find ways to avoid you, which obviously kept happening to me because there's islands all over the damn place. Plus, what am I doing? I'm trying to sail around and pick up buffs for the team. I'm trying to spot for the team, etc., etc., etc. So, like, am I am I playing Harugamo optimally? No, because I'm playing a destroyer, right? I'm playing destroy. Yeah, he's bottom and I'm not. So there you go. But like. For me, it's it's a completely different... One of the reasons the ship and I don't get along is because all the things that I want out of a traditional destroyer, Harugamo goes against. Harugamo wants to sit in smoke and farm things with her guns. Like, that's what she's good at. I don't do that in a Fletcher or a Gearing, generally, right? Because there's better things to be doing. If I'm sitting in smoke, guess what's not happening? I'm not spotting for my team. I'm a torpedo magnet sitting in smoke. This ship handles like, this ship handles like garbage. That's my point, Grunty, right? Like, the Shima is faster than me already. With my speed boost on, the Shima is already faster than me. I can't run a Shima down. He outspots me by over half a kilometer. If we had radar, ah, now things are a little different, right? If you find the Shima for me, hell yeah, I know where he is. I'll go murder him. I'll go hunt him down, right? But if I'm just going to have to wander the map like Hansel and Gretel, calling his name, here, Shima, Shima, like, really? You know, come on. Like, that's not going to work. Good night, Alu. Thanks for being here, buddy. 